Hold up. Let's hope YouTube is putting the algorithm out. You never know, do you? Uh, oh, there's just too much to cover. It's like you need an eternity. You only scratch the surface. Uh, I don't want to defend socialism. Right. But I don't want to defend communism either. Right. But there's people out here, they're in a group, and they're like, what's the word? I listened to a Mark Passio, right? And he had that liking rose. It's many years ago. It is something for freedom. Don't know. Uh, you know where they all go on and talk and all that. And liking rose is like coming out full attacking socialism. He's not a socialist. Right? I'm not a socialist either. Right? But as he's attacking it, he's like there's holes in his argument. Because the people that are well established, in other words, the, the people with the money, right? They're not going to budge. Okay. Now, you have to say, well, how did they get their money? And if you take it back, take it back, take it back, some of them, not all of them, but some of them, right? Landed gentry and shit like that, aren't they? So, you know, like you might be living. I'm not saying, I, I agree with liking rules as well. Like, it's quite tricky, this one, I'm trying to explain. But what I'm trying to say is, all right, I, 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 it's so difficult to do, but I'll do it this way. The NHS is a socialist system, right? So it's in place through socialism. The American system is a system where you have to pay for everything. Well, I don't know exactly how it works, but basically, yada, yada, yada. I mean, I've said it in videos way back as well. But when you think about it, the thing that America's problem, one of America's problems is, is it has to pay for all its health care, whereas in the United Kingdom you don't. That's a massive uh problem in your life taken care of it actually has given and would give people the ability to get on in life you see when donald trump came over from america he had his eyes on the national health service why because if they can get it privatized get it set up right america will basically own it and they'll be able to sell drug with the drugs that you get at a discount or However it works, don't ask me. But I do know it works this way. All of a sudden, everything's going to skyrocket up. You know, you'll be in the hospital, do that, and people come up to you and you want a credit card. You're going to get in debt to pay for the accident that a family member's occurred. Yeah? Now, this is serious. The Reform Party are also after your NHS. Right, the Great Reform Party. You see, it's really weird. Big up Pablo Diablo is in the yard. I'm well, mate. Yeah, I hope you're well as well. Yeah, it's quite all right. This end is all right. You know, scraping through. It's a scrape, but we're scraping through, which is all you can fucking do. Right, where was I now? It's, you see, Larkin Rolls doesn't understand, you see, that... The United Kingdom has had an NHS for, what is it, uh, 50 years? Let me, think, let me think that through. Let 
It's 90 years, isn't it? Paul is in the yard. Yes, Paul. Hope you're all right, bro. So these bastards are after our NHS. And they're after why they're all after it basically. Um, so when like like in Rose has a go at socialism, like he doesn't understand one the people that are out of the shit. A lot of them are fucking landed gentry or re relate or descendants of well loaded. Right, that's one of them, and the other one is that. If socialism works with the NHS, right, which it did, where we all paid in and everybody got out, then how can socialism not work? I want to ask him, how's the NHS work for so many years in the United Kingdom if socialism doesn't work? Because I reckon he'd be stumped. And he'd have to say, well, no, everyone should have to pay for their own health care then, shouldn't they? Say, yeah, but what if you haven't got the money? Should you be denied it? And he'd have to say, yeah. I'd love to have these people in a debate, but they'll know. <laughs> if you met me big on YouTube, I need comments under the videos, people. Thumbs up and comments. Paul, a man says your comments have no effect. Yeah, they do. They fight the algorithm. He's chatting shit. And Paul, a man, I'm annoyed with you, Paul, a man. Right, I'm not going to bang on about it. What he keeps saying, oh, no one comments. I comment. He deletes them the minute I comment. He must think, he must think I'm the Illuminati. So then I watched the Paul Man today and he went, oh, I've just watched Brian Harvey have a meltdown. So I went over to Brian Harvey and Brian Harvey's in this hospital, right? And he's going, fucking listen to me, you fucking cunts. Fucking get this fucking cunt doctor here right now. Do you know what I thought? He wouldn't say... No one would get away with that. Makes you look more fucking shilly, bro. Immediately. If you went into a holding hospital and started carrying on like that, you'd have no chance. So I don't know what's going on in your fucking airy fairy fucking farty world, mate. Seriously. Unless you are a fucking plant. And this is what made me really laugh, is Paul and Mum went, I don't like to see anyone like that. You're the one that's dragging him down, pal. In my opinion, rightly so, but you can't moan now. <laughs> Do you get what I mean? You, you stick it beating and then he, and then it, you, know, you know, one day, maybe Brian Harvey will kill himself live on fucking, he'll do the video where he kills himself and then it, it'll get uploaded after it'll be, I've killed myself because of Paul Man. <laughs> so... But Paul and Man's scared of me for some reason. I don't know why that is. Oh, I got hold of Tom Carroll last week. And uh, only because I downloaded Skype to have a look. Kips clips uploading at exactly the same time as me. Shilling that. Um, only because Blazing had come on. And I wanted to have a quick word with Blazing. So I downloaded the dinosaur app Skype. And uh, I had a message from Tom Carroll. So I rang Tom Carroll. Look, we had a chat like it was about, um, well, Brian Harvey was involved in the conversation, by the way. But also, we was talking about, um, well, this and that, basically. But I said, do you fancy coming on sometime? And, you know, whatever, like, you know what I mean? Like, and he says, yeah, yeah, I'll come on and have a chat. Like, so we might get some Carol on one night. Because he's funny. <laughs> I was having his figure there and I spat it all out. But he made me laugh when you come. Funny as fuck that cunt. But like anyway, we'll see if we can get Tom Carroll on that. That'll be quite funny, won't it? Uh what my advice to Brian. You don't go into an hospital and fucking scream and fucking F and blind at the staff. It's fucking out of order. You know, these poor cunts are sat there. Fucking doing the little fucking jobs, right? I'm not, I'm a cunt, me myself, but I would never go into an hospital, right? I'm sorry, and fucking think that I was fucking Lord of the Manor, and he's wandering around going, Yeah, I fucking so I had 30 million, is it 30 million records? What was he on about? Is it 30 million? If 
fucking hell, that Scottish lad streamed 15 billion. You're out. And like, I thought, you fucking ass, white. You, you know, I thought this is his come down because the other night I watched him do a video. It was called um, It's a Test or something like that. And they were whiffed up. They weren't massively whiffed up, but they'd had a little fucking bit of beak. And uh, I, I left a comment under it. I went, so the, 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 uh, the Charlie's now right tonight. Is it something like that? You know, the, a word to that effect. They sniffed up basically, fucking trying to do a video like that, and it, it wasn't very good. They weren't fucking cooked out of their head, but you know what I mean. So I must have gone in and have a little. So I thought, oh, this is the come down now. He's gone into the old fucking hospital, like, you know, melting down, shouting at every poor bastard that just works there. You know, and it was very empty, that hospital. Like, you know, there's only about three people, and I thought, this fucking stays this or what? It stunk a fucking fucker, is to be quite honest. Did anyone watch that video or what? And think that because I just thought if you go into Oldham Hospital or Manchester Royal, any any hospital that I've ever been in or no, right? And you start acting like that, they'll just they just get they just you get steamboated onto the deck, your arms, arms are behind your back. And you'd be get carried away, and you'd be took to a well, probably the police first, and then you get sent for fucking anal analysis, and then like you'd just be sectioned and in the fucking nuts house. But not Brian Harvey. He said I've done more for Walvin Stoke than any fuckers could ever know. <laughs> I put Walvin Stoke on the map. <laughs> oh yeah, do you think everyone really gives a fuck about E seventeen, Brian? And he Paul the man needs to man up there, bro, because like you're dragging him down, don't. That fucking battle in it. You're the one that's constantly attacking him, like he did with Pies. I go, he wasn't mentally well. You're attacking Brian Harvey. He isn't mentally well, and you're going in like hardcore. So I don't fucking, you know what I mean? Like when you bring the fucking uh, gazelle down, don't fucking moan when you. When... <laughs> yeah, I mean I don't have any fucking what's the word for Brian? Like you know. Well, I think he's a he was a plant. I don't think he's a plant now. I just think he's a, a sad little cunt screaming for attention, like you know, and he's probably making a few quid. Uh but he was definitely part of something back there. Did he know what it was? Well, we'll never know, will we? Pretty sure we knew that there was something dodgy going on, like Ben Fellows. Uh Bill Malone. You'd have stunk shit when you were stood near him, wouldn't you? So, but there you go. That's it. Um, it's a lot of dog shit, isn't it? Good evening. I need you to give me comments. Fuck's sake, Charlie's Angels. Explain that to me, Paul. It's such a load of shit, the internet, isn't it? It's fucking balls. Never heard so much shite in all my life. It's getting me down. Cocaine and Harvey. Well, I'm not having a go at him. I've done it myself, like, but he'd have he'd had a sniff of the old that he thought he could pull it off, like, you know. But he didn't. And then he's in an hospital, like fucking screaming and shouting like a little fucking bitch. And I thought, that's the come down. Because after they'd have turned the camera off, they would have gone, right, come on, line them up, let's go, wouldn't they, you see? And uh That's what then, the aftermath of that, sent him into an hospital, screaming and shouting at all the staff. 
like he was some big fucking thing that had the right to fucking treat hard working people like that because he hasn't and then he got a straight arm and if I'd have been in that hospital fucking had I been sat in that waiting room I would have got up and fucking headbutted the cunt to be quite honest oh yeah I would yeah yeah he got an headbutt off me ah, would I got done for it probably not because the police would have looked at it judge would have looked at it and gone oh you were fucking right he's a fucking prick him someone needed to fucking headbutt him but I suppose you can get away with that down south can't you Get away with it up north. No. Looking prick. I think he'd gone in early doors. It was very quiet. Like I said, I've never seen such an empty hospital. It was eerily empty, like, you know. And he's left it up on his channel. Oh, my God. He want to come down. Come down from the sniff. Nah. Well, that's what Charlie does, isn't it? Have you never done that? I've done it. You'd have to kneel down. No, no, not to fucking tell myself. <laughs> Look, tell on camera. <laughs> Piss off, cat. This cat's annoying me. Sure, it wants to fucking kill me. It's crying for food when it's got food in its fucking bowl. Oh god, it's just a fucking nightmare, isn't it? You know, I mean, what's a fucking I'm not being funny, Brian, but you're a scumball. Did no one teach you how to fucking deal in the real world? You know, if you want to speak to a doctor at a hospital, you go in, you go, excuse me, could I speak to this doctor? Do you think he's gonna come and see you because you're screaming and shouting like a big fucking fairy at fucking front, threatening manner and Effing and blinding. Oh, doctor, yes. Uh, there's some geezer in the fucking waiting room and he's effing and blinding, saying that you need to go and fucking see him right now. The doctor ain't going to come and see you, is he? Fuck. I'm going to say, fuck that. Do I want to see a fucking nutter for? He sounds like he needs the people from the psychiatric world to come up, grab hold of him, restrain him, and then, again, police, and then uh, back to the psychiatric ward, isn't it? But Brian's had a bit of sniff the night before. Couldn't cope with cum now. Don't have any drugs, you, Brian. You fucking prick, mate. Can't take them. That smoking weed, no good for you, mate. None of it's any good for you, mate. Seriously. And Paula, man, you need to think about this, like, what you're doing. Because, um, Brian, well, he used to say this for pies I got, didn't I? But Brian isn't well, is he? You don't act like him, if you're well. Even if he's been caught up in all this crap, he's not fucking well. Now, this was interesting. I watched this film the other night. It's 2023. And it's that Luther. It's a good film. I enjoyed it. Like, the film itself was good. But it was a, it had the red dreams in it, didn't it? I thought, fucking hell, it like this is uh, what's it? Predictive programming in action, isn't it? Like, and it was all about the red dreams. Oh, mm, mm. you know, like they put something out and then later on, like you know, they bring something else about out about it, like you know what I mean? Like, I thought, fucking hell, now. If Brian's there, uh, like, looking mentally unstable, uh, lashing out at the Red Room situation that he had in his past, is that to discredit the Red Rooms? Is that? that like, because, like, it was, a, it was a, a secret door and him and that bird that's got no nose left through the sniff. Now they're putting it out in the 2023 film with that black guy that's been in all the big films, so he's loony panties, isn't he? I don't know, just saying. Strange, isn't it? Very, very, very weird. 
What else have we got? Sunak's been on the fiddle, hasn't he, with his policies? Well, that's not surprising, is it? Um, oh, this was a good one. I left a comment. Uh, Keir Starmer and this video, it was only a minute one. It was a baby, it was a, a news one, and he went, The people are after a good leadership. And I said, Oh, Starmer wants uh, Starmer, right? Thinks the people want good leadership, but he can't even uh, say that. Uh, Men can't have a cervix. That comment's going up. Up and up right now. <laughs> oh, yeah. Mind you, they, they, do, they do censor me comments as well. Because like, this is what I was saying about Paula Mann. Like, Paula Mann, I'm commenting, right? Because he said, oh, no one comments. So I've been commenting for ages. No one supports me. I've been supporting him for ages. For fucking years I've been... Since the first crowd, seen him on YouTube, I mentioned him. And I've been done tons of lives. He's had loads of fucking mentions off me. I reckon I've sent him a few hundred subs, I would imagine. Right? But either he's deleting my comments or YouTube is. I'd like to know which one it is. So Lenny, who's who were in a thread with uh, Paul Man in the thread like, so I, I commented to Lenny under these threads, like, and I said, we'll just have a word of him, like, you know what I mean? Because no reply, no reply, like, but he's obviously bit, he's obviously getting your comment, so can you tell him I'm not the Illuminati? I said, because, like, he could come on a live if he wanted. Quite quite interesting, wouldn't it? Have a chat, Paula, man, Brian Harvey, Brian Harvey. Because uh, he's 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 well studied it all from the past, so he's definitely worth you know going back through his videos a bit like and listening to what he's got to say like. Well, I did a video and it was the Dirty Dozen, and one of these Dirty Dozen was Adam Ant's dad, and I said in a comment which again got deleted either off YouTube or Parliament. I said, well, it shows the connects with, um, you know, pop musicians, media, blah, 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 in the, in the nonsy fucking ways, doesn't it? Um, but that was disgusting because it said, like, these lads, they've been, like, shagging 11 to 14-year-old boys, passing them around. Keeping away, keeping them away from the police. I don't know, but I don't. I, I really don't know because I'm not really looked into it deeply. So I want to go off Parliament video, but um, the worst one of them we got were three years. The others got like two years, and so you can grab a fucking eleven-year-old boy, rape him, right, and end up getting fucking two years off this system. That fucking about, huh? I was talking to a girl the other day, and uh, she was going on about uh, Jimmy Savile, blah blah blah. And uh, I said, Well, I had a mate, and he was like, He was a drug addict and a criminal. So obviously, he was quite often getting a bit of jail, like he said, It disgusts me. And I said, What's that, bro? He says, like, he'll be in strange ways, right? or in the old incels. And in little biro pen, they'll be like, they'll scribble on walls, I love kids, and all this shit. And he said, like, I'll get done for uh, a crime. Right? He said, and I'll get, like, four years, two years, blah, blah, blah. He said, but these are out in fucking six months, and some of them don't even see jail. So we were talking about them people that entrap paedophiles, right? And I said, did you watch that on? It was like a bit of a documentary, like, and she went, oh, yeah, I've seen that. There was only one got jail. All the others just got slaps on the hand and uh, fines and stuff. For trying to meet kids online. I said, it's tolerated. You know, it's just the way it is. Rotherham, it, it's still going on. I, I, 
I have been led to believe that nothing's really actually changed. To be quite honest. If you go to Rotherham, you'll see it's all just still going on. You know, Asian men are, get, are, are basically whatever the word is. And, you know, and some of these, like I said to this girl, like I said, but these girls, they probably don't fucking help themselves, do they? You know, if you're hungry, what would you do for a piece of fried chicken? Like, you know, I'm mean, not being horrible, but... This was the conversation. I'm going through the conversation, lad. And then I said, well, years ago, I know it's a state. Uh, my mate started shagging, call her a bit of rough light. She was about, about 19 at the time. She had a load of kids. Uh, and we were talking, I was talking to her, she said, the problem is, like, these girls at, like, 13 on this council estate at the time, um, getting shagged by all the lads. She said, like, they're not, it, it's not, basically, it's not all the lads, if you know what I mean, like, um, I suppose if you reversed it, uh, and you were a 15 year old lad and, you know, and like 19 year old girls coming on to you, like when you were 15, if you had the balls, like, you know, blah, 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 and you were getting benefits, like drink, drugs, fucking rah, 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 rah. So I said, well, it's, it's, I said, like, when my dad were at, uh, my dad were born in the war time, like, you know, the end of the war, like, you know. And when they was, uh, they were at, there was a school, like, and they had this professional footballer come round, and he was um, teaching the, the lads football, like, but he ended up being a paedophile. You know, and then, like, you've got ancient Greece, haven't you? you got Afghanistan dancing boys, Islam, the Muslims, like, you know. Shagging kids. No, fucking new, is it? So, but this, what does, this, you know, like, this is what I mean. It's not going to stop if the system isn't going to hand out fucking serious fucking jail for it, is it? Not going to stop. You're not. They're not getting fucking. You know. I mean, obviously, on some level, they're ill. It's it's an illness, isn't it? I suppose. Uh, you know. Well, it's an illness of not knowing right from wrong, isn't it? But it's an illness, and on top of that, if you get caught, you, you, if you're lucky, you'll get, like, two years. So you're not going to see all that stuff, are you? Never going to stop, is it? Do you get what I mean? That's my rant on that, you know. Uh, we're just going about Jimmy Savile. Well, well, Jimmy Savile was a fixer, which is a procurer of children, and that's why they called it Jim will fix it. That's why it was in Israel one day and um, the Vatican another. It was a fucking kid rape trainer, wasn't it? That's why when he officially died, they said they couldn't believe how much money he had. Fucking prostituting children fucking for 30, 40 years, aren't they? The real Jeffrey Epstein. I don't think he's dead. Don't think Jeffrey Epstein's dead either. I'm not saying they're not. It's quite possible that they are, but I just wouldn't be surprised if they're fucking still alive somewhere. It goes into the Satanism next, doesn't it? Well, yeah, well, it does, doesn't it? You know, I think we're being gaslit into believing that it's not possible, that there's massive satanic rings going on in higher places as well as lower places. Well, I just don't think that's uh, a realistic view of the situation, to be quite honest. Sorry. No. Oh, no, if it can be going on, it is going on. You know, and they've seen it, well, they see it constantly, don't they? They see it through films, don't they? And 
every film she watches, some fuckers getting fucking murdered and tortured and blah, blah, blah. It's... But that Leith is a good film. Mm. It's an enjoyable film. It's a bit far fetched, like, you know. But it's an enjoyable film and it has the red rooms in it. Um, now, that last video has gone nowhere. Well, maybe the picture isn't right. Maybe the name isn't right. But I tell you what, what definitely isn't right for that last video is the subject. You see? Because it's going against Biden and it's kind of backing the fact that the elections on some level were definitely uh, rigged, which I still believe. So this video will go nowhere as well. That's all right. doesn't really matter to me. <laughs> oh, God. And there you go. Are we kicking? Is it kicking? Is it kicking us? That won't fucking surprise me. Well, there you go. I've used the YouTube app, but I've managed to get it on its correct sideage tonight, which is uh, no mean feat. If there's free watching and no one commenting, it starts to make the hairs go on the back of your neck go up, man. <laughs> Rebel Rhymes is alive and well, people. It gives out all this food now so that you don't mind with me in a minute. Tom Cara, that'll be good if he comes on, won't it? Still waiting for Brother Si to come on like that. Paula, man. Come on, Paula, man. Go and have a chat with your uncle Andy. Because he's a clever guy. Be interesting. Be real interesting. He says he don't believe in conspiracies, but I think he does. I think he believes there's a bit of a conspiracy going on. Mind you, you've had camps outside the BBC for five, the last five months. I'd expect some serious fucking increase in subscriptions. You get what I mean? Like, I mean, I, I can't say the comments if he's deleting them, so I don't know what his comments would really be like, or if YouTube's deleting them, which I don't know which is which, though. So, but I would expect some say you know what i mean if you're outside the bbc and you're grabbing the rich and famous as they walk by which he has done he's done you know he's grabbed quite a few people like, uh, and had a chat with them and they've come on and like, had a little word or they've blanked them and walked by like i would be expecting some movement on my channel you know what i mean and on that level, I see the uh, the fact that he's massively suppressed. Massively fucking suppressed. Outside the BBC for five months in a fucking tent. 
He's not even got a, you'd have expected him to get on the news, wouldn't you? He's outside the BBC, you'd expect that, wouldn't you? But no. So I mean, I backed him up all the way. Backed him up all the way. And, and like, if, if you think, if you can't trust me, Paula, man, like, then you, you're over paranoid there, brother. What I mean? <clears throat> no comments coming in. We've not got anyone watching, have we? It looks like one of them, like, mind you. It's Wednesday night, isn't it? Feeling like it's in early air, isn't it? Summer's nearly here. That'll be good. I do love summer. Hot pepper is in the yard. Yes, Crossman. Yes, hot pepper. I hope you're doing well. Good evening. Thanks for calling on by. We're only a little channel. It's hard to get the viewers, you know. Give you the thumb up, hot pepper, for fuck's sake. I'm trying to work out a devious play, a way to get massive on YouTube so I can earn money and not do anything. Is it going well? No, it's going terrible. She's not got the fucking intellect. Not got the intellectual capacity. I've stayed off bit shoot for a bit. It's bad for your health, bit shoot. <laughs> Drags you down. No, it's ninety eight percent crap. Like you know, I mean, there are some gems on there from the past, uh, which there are. I'm not lying, but like they're hard to fucking find, and half of them like really don't play. No matter what you do, so um oh fucking killing it on chess, smashing it. I'm still shit numbers, but there's flashes of greatness and brilliance because I'm 47, 40, I'm a 47 or 48, is it? That's a bad thing, isn't it? Don't know his own age. I have to go into all the hospital tomorrow and go, come on, you cunts. I'll knock you all the fuck out. Um, 48, I think, unfortunately. So you don't really get better at chess at 48. Doesn't mean you can't get better. It just means you struggle to get better. The only way you can improve at 48 at chess is to start understanding the mistakes that you're making. This is a lesson to you, this Brian Hardy. Um, and uh, take your time, think about the moves, and have a little look what great players have done before you, and listen to some of the logic of uh, 
people trying to explain it, but they're pretty much all crap. But I found one that's pretty decent. Um, so I reckon I might slip up to eleven hundred in a minute. Yeah, I I, I did get to twelve fifty, but that was about. Oh, that's boring, chess, isn't it? But I'm still going to talk about it. That was about. Oh, it must be like. Must be six years ago, if not a bit more. So, like I say, when the mind is young. But there's flashes of brilliance occurring. So I reckon I can. I reckon I can get. A, I reckon I can get up there a little bit. Like you know, I've got a feeling I can. I believe if you believe in yourself, you can do it. I, 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 I'd, like, I'd, I'd settle for like 2200, but I mean, that's fucking massive. That to get up there, but I reckon I've, I've, that's if I've got an ambition, that's what it is. Like, I've played a few games recently and they've been that clean, they've been with good players. And they've been that clean, like the chess game's been that clean. And when it game's finished, it's gone. No mistakes, no blunders, no uh, uh, no misses, which tells me that I'm on the right path. And playing without a drinking me, that's the other great manoeuvre. Because what I do is I'll have a drink and then I think, let's have a game of chess, like. <laughs> very, very bad idea. <laughs> Uh, it's a fucking great game. I love it. I love, I love the game of chess. But well, your brain's only got so much ability, like Brian. Don't start to be out smoking. It's on the it's on the uh, it's on the agenda. I'm enjoying it too much to worry about it. Worry about what you eat. If you if, if you worry about the smoking and you're eating, then you're never gonna eat and smoke and you'll have no enjoyment in life, will you? Like, what are you having tomorrow? Three plates of salad with a bit of fruit for my supper and uh, th three and a half litres of water. That's me. And some meditation. If we're not getting any comments, it's no good, this. I need something to bounce off. Give us a fucking question or something, brothers. Or maybe a sister. Ox Pepper, if you're in the yard, come on, ask. give us a fucking viewpoint. Tell me what's going on in the world, somebody. Jesus Christ. It's so hard living it like this. I need something to bounce off. I've only got a very small brain. It's nice to just have someone point something out if you don't mind. We've done paedophilia. We've done Brian Harvey. We've done Paula Man. What's next? We've done Jimmy Savile. Oh, we'll do, we'll do unplug them. Like, I love unplug them. I love him. Right? But he started about the same time that I did. And like, he used to communicate. Me, and he was like, oh, Andy, you're going into, you know, you're going the wrong way. Like, you know, all this shit. So many years later, like, well, basically, I left him a comment under uh, one of his latest vids because he pops up like and I said right you're making money off pushing religion huh? which he is 
he's got adverts on his videos not even his own stuff he's just uploading like uh the like cooper stuff and mayshire uh all the old crap uh but it's not it's not it's not it's not not worth listening i like the amendment and the ten commandments if you were to write such a god i don't like questions like yes it's amazing if you were to write such text what five philosophies would you write there are things we know there are things we don't know and there are things that we think we know and the other one is <laughs> you're not sure if you know anything and the last one is be one with yourself <laughs> I had to do it like that i do apologize <laughs> Five Commandments, good God. Go easy on people is number one. Go easy on people. Number two is, don't believe that what you're saying is actually true. And number three is, don't believe what you're saying is actually true for everybody even though it might be true for some people is that three number four number four because i'd have to really i'd have to get there like and actually really analyze this like number four would be i suppose that would be number one Go easy on them, people. Because number four might be, don't be a twat. But maybe, num well, all right, well, number five then, which should be number one then, would be, and this is also, this is a correct one, right? Honour your mother and father. Yeah? Absolutely. You know, like my dad's dead now. So I've got, I can't really go and ask him anymore. Luckily, I'm pretty sure I got most of his information because he were like me and he used to have a drink and talk a lot of shite like. But, you know, and any of your mums and mum and dad's a twat scraps this from the uh, commandment book. But, you know, honour your mum and dad. Yeah, I think that's got to be, well, it's the number one commandment in my book, really. If they're decent, if they, they dog shit, then don't honour them at all, like, you know. Just, be, just make sure that, like, you're not dog shit and actually they're... Because <laughs> you can think that they're dog shit when it's you being dog shit. It's like, have you not spoke to your, your mum or your dad for ages and they're still alive? Give them a ring tomorrow. I'll give them a ring when you're watching this or when you watch it tomorrow. Break the ice. It goes to the friends of you. Like, like there's a lot of people they've not bothered with friends after the COVID bullshit. You know, that's another one that I'd like. I've pointed that out many times. I'll do it again because we always need a recap. If you've got a pal, a group of friends, whatever, 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 and for some reason you've become reclusive to that person, them people, bite the bullet and get in touch with them. B1. Yeah, that's good. That's good stuff for the Crossman channel to say, isn't it? Because there's been that many people separated through the, the rough sea and turmoil that COVID has actually been. Um, it's, it's amazing, isn't it? You know, close family ties have been severed 
like people had been in desperation and had to turn to family members that was probably in desperation themselves and falling out, saying like, you couldn't help us out, could you? And they're like, oh, fuck out, you can't, you can't keep this ship afloat. A lot of stuff has happened through the COVID. And uh, if you can reconnect the lost ties, only the ones that you want to reconnect, one of the ones that you valued before all this shit happened. Reconnect them. And, and and also don't forget, some people haven't got in touch with you because they've had their heads fucked up. Maybe you have to offer them the olive branch. And then start again. You've had your orders. Not wrong with them, is there? But for twats, don't bother with any twats. Fuck that. That's what I mean. Uh, some people are actually... Well, it's not like they're worth dropping. It's just like... You've got no fucking choice, have you? You know what I mean, like? So, on that level, <laughs> COVID, you know, there's a downside to that point of view, but there's also an upside, isn't there? Like, some people have actually shaken off people that they probably now have come through the COVID and they've thought, I don't have to fucking deal with that cunt anymore, like, you know what I mean, like, you know what I mean, like, whereas before, like, I felt obliged, but now I don't, so, is, is it all negative, is it all negative, is it, no, it can't be, can it? But, like, the world is a bit, it, like, again... This point in time, 2023, it's an absolute new world to pre-COVID. And, and I mean, like, what I'm, I mean, like, uh, the way that relationships have ended up being. COVID learnt me who the ignorant people in my life were. Spazy 100. Well, Spazy, that's kind of what I'm trying to just explain then, if you get what I'm saying. I hope, like, I nudged you into that. That's what I'm on about, yeah. But, like, it depends what you mean by ignorant, because we're all fucking ignorant. We're all dumb. Andrea opens in the yard. Yes, Andrea, I hope you're well. Um, we're all fucking... We're all... We're, Even these, like Jordan Peterson, he's thick as fuck. Sorry. A lot of people say, oh, you're all right, Nick, saying that. I'm not. He, he, he doesn't know anything. You know, like we're, like, we're led to believe through crap off the internet, like that, like everyone's above us. Fucking bullshit. It was weird, this, because I listen to a lot of this philosophy shite like that. I shouldn't fucking do it, really, but I do. And, like, one of these people in one of these things, he was saying, like, uh, basically what I've just said, but years ago in a video, I said, you know, when you, you hear these smart come, coming out with crap, I said everything's learned and repeated. I said, and some of these great words of wisdom that have come out from the upper fucking... Class type cunts like they've heard it off a farmer who will end on a fucking farm fence. I know we were doing well, Andrew. We we're going fucking big on YouTube. They were leaning on a you, you get what I mean? The knowledge, it's I, again, I'm, I'm here chatting now, but I'm only repeating crap that I've heard. I've, I've never had an original thought in my life. You know, we're only going, you know, we're like a, we're like a tide moving. So, 
Yeah. I tell you what, Andrew, I'll, I'll, I'll be afraid of that. I'll be afraid of that. Quite happy chilling. Chilling with a few compadres. I hope they're having a, a whiskey or, or a glass of beer. It's only Wednesday night. I keep coming on early like, to try and get a few in. Yeah, it's all fucking crap, really. But, yeah, I mean, absolutely. I've lost a few. I don't mean, like, people died, like, but I've cut, managed, well, not, I haven't personally cut people out, but people that, like, used to sort of, like, I don't know what the word is, like, there's a, there's a few pre-COVID that I don't have to deal with, put it that way, like, you know. Uh, some of them... I'm not happy about, but some of them are quite glad. You get what I mean? Um, and I don't know what they're doing. Because like, it's been a big shake-up, hasn't it? I think they're all still alive. Helpful trolls, dead, Andrea. He died, he's dead. He rang me up from uh, hospital. And... Uh, He's no more. I do occasionally ring him on his sky and it's all beep, beep. He's dead. Passed over to the helpful troll world. That's why I, 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 I rang Tom Carroll up on Skype and uh, I told him I went, helpful troll's dead. I said, I don't know who helpful troll is. And then I explained and he went, all oh, right, yeah, I do remember now. He went, all oh, right. What is that? I said, yeah, he's dead. <laughs> Long live the helpful troll in the afterlife, though. I'm sure he'll be on his heart, you know, on it with his heart and his cloud looking down now going. Mm. I know, he was a good guy, the laundry, wasn't he? Helpful was cool. There's loads of died, don't there? Hot pepper is having a is having a beverage. You can't beat a bevy. No, it's wrong. You shouldn't drink. You shouldn't smoke. I don't think think there is an afterlife. If there was, but. Where well, you're gone, you're gone. <laughs> <laughs> it don't matter what you think, does it? Because what you think is it what you know. You don't know what happens when you die. I would agree, like, you're probably just dead. But then again, weird things happen, don't they? You know, like, after my dad died, I've done this before, I'll redo it again quickly, like, because I've done it before. Me and Marie, at the time, the bird at the time, like, we was sat and we had this big crystal ash tree on a wooden floor in front of a city, and we heard a big crack, and the ash tree just split in half. Hadn't been kicked, hadn't been touched. And it was just after my dad died, I thought, oh, he's here, is he? So, I don't know what happens when you die. But, uh, I don't think anybody else does either, like, you know what I mean? So, I don't know what, it doesn't really matter, does it? That's what I'm saying. What happens when you die doesn't really matter. If we all stop worrying about what happened when we die, we'd actually start to live, wouldn't we? You know, it's all this fear of death. Do ye believe in orbs? Uh, well, I've, I've, I've seen all this stuff. I don't know what I believe in. Again, you know, it's the matrix, isn't it? You know, we're in a, a thing you would do anyway. Like, I don't want to joke you with us. Like that. You know, but you've got Jordan Peterson telling you. You've got... Um, oh, God. 
Well, you've got Jordan Peterson telling you. Elon Musk, so come on. I've seen Orb captured on film, like, you know. Um, I've had some really speaky experiences. I've done all this before, so I'm, I'm, I'm hard-pressed to even bother going into it. But, like, you know, I've seen what you would call ghosts. Um, but we don't go into them as this, because we're being a socialist. That's what I said to Alan, like, he's like a hardened atheist socialist stroke communist. And I said, well, have you never had any uh, supernatural experience? And he said, we don't go into them. I don't know what happens when you die. I'm not qualified to say. Um, I just don't know. It'd be quite interesting when you die to find out, all it? Like, well, let's not rush it. <laughs> Do you think we had a previous reset like the one being rolled out now? Uh, I think we've had many resets like this, haven't we? You know, we used to trade in seashells, didn't we? Or uh, beads or... Uh, or so like we used to trade in gold then, you know. And then like the alchemists or the magicians would magically make things look gold by like melting alloys together, didn't they? Like, you know. Which is what they do now, isn't it? You know, so what like the prices upon the coin? Now we'd have an alchemy uh, process to us via uh, data coins, aren't we? Like, you know. So does it matter? Well. The, <laughs> Yeah, there's been loads of resets. Oh, of course there is. Yeah, I mean, everything's a reset, isn't it? Like, you know, gold standard to paper money is a reset. You know, from the finite cash paper money system to the digital uh data uh credit system is another reset well that's the reset you know they're not joking they're telling you what's happening you know we're going to go to cbdc's and we're going to go to them from physical like a uh, suitcase full of 20 pound notes like you know that's what's going to happen next um but the truth, I mean, it gets horrible, this, but the truth is we're on about resources, you see, when, when we're going to that level of understanding. So, like, the real war is the war for resources. Um, so there's that much toxic debt at the top of this cash system, finite cash system, that they can kick it over to... Um, digital, right, and burn all that debt off. It's the only thing they, they haven't actually got any other options. You see, so that that's what we're about. We'll we'll see it in the next. Oh God, I mean, I hate to say it, but like, it could be in the next. Well, it, it's going to have to happen soon because. If it doesn't happen, it, it, what happens is it's like the end of fucking reality itself, like for them that are doing well as well, you see. So they'll, they'll kick us over to digital currency. And uh, we, we in our minds think, oh, it's so they can control us, which they will get. They'll get control over us. But in reality, it's because this system's going to burn up and die if they don't. And that's because there's a war for resources on that side of it, basically. 
So they've not really got any much choice. They've, yeah, they're, they're at the end of the line. They've kicked the can down the road. They've used COVID. They've used um, Ukraine. But in, at the end, it's digital currency for all in the end. See, so they can like write off a load of debts, basically. <laughs> Or oh, things that will never get paid. That's that's the only thing they've got. That that they're at the end of the road. But like the downside of it will be, <coughs> like I say, you'll go in a pub, you'll buy a pint of lager, and the next pint will be slightly more expensive. <laughs> you get what I mean? Like because you control every aspect of your life. Then, like you'll go in a, you'll order some food, like, and it'll be a lot cheaper to not have a, a steak. <laughs> this shit like that. It's, it's just what's going to happen. Do you have to worry about it? Well, it's a bit annoying. But the bit, the end of the, this is the end of the railroad. You see, we got no choice. No force it in the end. Money won't die immediately. You know, they'll do it side by side at, at, in the beginning. Like, because, like, we'll be asked. So they'll run a pound for a coin. And they'll run it together like that. And then we'll, like, you know, in the next 20, 30, 40 years, we'll all be dead, you see. And the generations after that, it will be all that they knew. Just like people would have kicked off when they went from gold to finite notes. Get what I mean? Like it, it, they do it to work, like no one's really noticed because you're not really asked. Just like we're bothered about driverless cars, but in the future it'll be absolutely normal. Yeah. Will many die and suffer? Well, many will die and suffer. But at the end of the road, like you'd probably end up with a, like, a better world in the end, believe it or not. Well, with a lot less death, will it be a better world? Well, that's another one thing isn't it um what that's life isn't it you know our great granddads had to go and well our great granddads had to go and stand in the trench didn't they you know be a number and go over the top get the red blown off you know Then our granddads had to go and fucking run around fucking Europe, didn't they? Getting their heads blown off. Um, now they want to like all oh, this fear of a nuclear war over you, like you know. Uh, is it? I, I doubt it. I'm not really. I, well, I'm, again, I'm old. Like if it happens, I've had a, I've had a belt to fuck you. But it's not good for the. But like. It, the way the world's getting, it's like there's no point in the world existing if we're not careful. And then they want to fear to death about artificial intelligence, which is another blunder. Um, but the truth of the matter is, there's a lot of us on the planet, even though you could put us all on the Isle of Wight or whatever they want to say. I know that, I know that's true. Well, there's a lot of us on the planet. So there's a lot of um, needs. Yeah. There's a lot of demand. You get what I mean when I say that? So there's a war for resources. No, like, that's what I'm trying to say when I say this. Like, don't worry about... Um, Illegal immigration or immigrate or any of that. That's a small problem in reality. The, the true problem on the that the planet faces is that everything on the planet is basically pretty much finite. See, and if there's one thing that the e what's the word, the environmentalists point out, right? I mean they're 
in my eyes, they're tripping, but there's one thing that they point out that's actually true is for, for all the mouths that you need to feed, you need X amount of activity, X amount of to keep the eggs and bacon on the table, which is why it's the real reason. It's the real reason that things are going up in value, by the way. It's the real reason. You see, like, like my mum's fella, he had like about 180 Aberdeen Anguses on the field. Uh, I, and like when I'd split up with her one time, like I went out with her and we were like walking around like it was weird in the moors, like, you know. And we were, we were putting down these bags and, like, they had feed in them. Yeah, but well, we weren't bothered about giving them wind. But, like, we had to give them, like, feed. Yeah? Because the grass wasn't enough. And then also on top of that, they had to... I'm going to read these comments in a minute because I'm going... They had to, like, have uh, medical attention. Yeah? Um... Otherwise, they'd die from illnesses. And is it true? I don't know. It's just what, what they had to do. But in the end, it wasn't uh, viable to keep them. So he sold them all. Luckily, he got rid of them all. Yeah? And then there was off his hands. Like in summer, there were no water. He had to go and get water to them. See, so it's very labour-intensive. Right? You, you don't just get a cow and throw it on a field. Do you get what I mean? It's not. And so it's a war for resources. That meat is obviously going to go up in value. And in the end, if you're the poor, you're not going to afford it, are you? Do you get what I mean? And that's what's happened. And that's what's happening. Even though there's masses of land, there's massive vast spaces, there's blah, 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 blah. Hitler wanted to, part, well, the reason Hitler went, all that Hitler was about was getting more land, believe it or not. You see? It's, it's so that he could feed Germany. Think about that. I know. I'm going for the, I'm going looking for the cat. Zorro! I've not checked it, but gas and electric should have gone cheaper now. Let me just have a look. Yeah. Gas and electric should have gone cheaper now. Now, that's something to do with Putin, obviously. And, like, again, um, <laughs> How, how much, on what, on what level is that a game? I, I do ask myself that. I mean, we can have it right, can't we? The people, this is where Larkin Rolls doesn't quite understand it. The people that, right, my mate, she works at Asda. And the, them, the two Asian lads, aren't they? And she said, I can see them 
getting arrested in a minute. I went, what for? She went, money laundering. I said, but that's a legitimate crime now, isn't it? Am I wrong? No, it's a legitimate crime. As long as you've got enough money to bribe you and pay your way out of it, it's fine. I said, that's what they're all up to now. She went, yeah, true. She said, well, they've got an halal butchers now. I said, right. This conversation came about because I said, I knew, I've known a couple of people that were butchers on the high street and they've ended up working in the, whatever you call it, butchers at um, supermarkets. I said, and then they've ended up like on slightly above minimum wage doing the job that they used to do for a good fucking earner. So then she mentioned... And now she said, so this Asda's where she works has got a uh, halal butchers in there. She said, and nobody buys anything. She said, when it was English people, English butchers doing English butchery, she said it was fucking hammered all the time. So, but the minute they've turned it into halal, got like some Asians behind this. Said, He's dead. I said, he might be dead. I said, they might be doing things up behind the, the doors of the, on the internet. Like, you know, she said, well, that might be true, actually. She said, but there's no one queuing up now. I said, well, they probably don't do pork chops, do they? <laughs> Can an Al Butchers in has to give you pork and bacon and sausage? I don't know. I, don't, I need to look into these things. So, so much to look into. And so little, sorry. Zara? Put them back there like that. Right, I'll draft them back. Getting old. So, but yeah, it's, it's like basically like they'll have to go to they'll have to change the way that currency works to knock off the the toxic debt and toxic debt meaning debt that will never be paid. So he's in. You're in now, hey pal. Fat ass, aren't you? Cattle call in the pot, boy. Because he's getting a bit bigger now, like, he's, he's had a few fights with, like, he's obviously not one, like, you know. He wouldn't go out for a bit, like, he, like, sat, like, basically glued to me, like, you know. Uh, but he started going back out now. He's having it now, like, you know what I mean? Because he's, he's going on, on the uh, hunt for love, isn't he? I thought I'd noticed the difference in as the meat. Oh, really? Well, there you go. I mean, I don't know. Well, this is uh, this is one store that has got a how the butchers have changed into a halal thingamajig. So I don't know. Uh, I get my meat pretty much from I, I get it pretty much from Aldi. To be quite honest. Um. The chickens are brilliant. Yeah, it's good stuff, Aldi. You can't do a full shop. There's a lad there, he's called the Baldy Food Guy. He's brilliant. And uh, when I've, 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 <laughs> I was telling people, wasn't I, ages ago, like, but uh, I left a comment and I said, like, Aldi is good for mince, uh, chicken, um, sausage, uh, giants of beef, it's good for everything like that. But when you when you go around it, like it's shit on other things, if you know what I mean. Aldi's pretty shit for like getting a full shot from Aldi, a full shot, so you had nothing at all in your cupboards. Getting a full shot from Aldi would be quite difficult, basically. But the beans are good. I love them Aldi beans. They're not the cheap ones. They're like, I can't think what they call, but they're about 30 of P a can light or 40 P a can light. Fucking brilliant. The tomatoes are brilliant. Like, but the carrots, they go off dead quick. So watch out. If you get the carrots, remember to get on, get on with them. Like, but uh, Aldi's brilliant for everything, but... Uh, you can't get a rounded shop, if you know what I mean. 
It's like you can't find Oxo in Aldi. Don't know what that's about. Or you can't even find a, a supplement. Um, but them chickens are brilliant. All the chickens are brilliant. They don't shrink or nothing. As they used to have a halal section, but. Well, is it halal? I mean, what is halal? Did you not know? There was a massive controversy on what the Jews were selling as kosher. If you if you Google this, you'll find videos on it. Because the Jews were selling meat as kosher to their own people. And it come out, it was all a load of lies. Right? A load of shit. Now, I bet you Alal's exactly the same. Because Alal is to basically string the animal up, upside down and slit its throat. Which is the very best way to kill an animal, by the way. I'd rather be hung upside down. Get the fuck down. I'd rather be, or you'll be halal. I'd rather be hung upside down and have my throat slit. Right? Than try to be pacified with electro, electro shocks in my head. Psh, psh, psh. They didn't work. Psh, psh. Then have my fucking throat slit. Fuck okay. off. Uh, I, I watched this thing and it was the meat industry. And uh, they were showing, like, the, the drama of, like, uh, let's call it mechanised butchery, like, you know. And uh, everyone was going, like, ooh, underneath. And I went, I went well, we all got to fucking eat, haven't we? Like, and someone went, ooh, you can't, what do you mean? I went, what's the best way? I said, the best way is the old way. What's the old way? You go up to the animal. You hold it. You stroke it, it's head, and when, when it's just chilled, you just slit its throat. The old way is the best way. Well, I don't think they were doing it at Aldi. Yeah, Aldi's a good shot. I love, I love Aldi, but you can't get like Kellogg's Corn Flakes. You can sometimes get HP. You can't find cans of spam hardly. Um, there's quite a bit lacking in Aldi, but you save a fucking fortune. Uh, you know, so you, what you have to do, as I left in this comment, like, you know, <laughs> what you have to do is go around Aldi, get what you can from Aldi, and then when you've done your Aldi shop, yeah, you have to go to uh, Ad Asda and top it up. So, Morrison's the scenes, oh, you're a posh, aren't you? I can't stand either of them, to be quite honest, Morrison and Strange. But you can get the, the doodah. Oh, well, listen to this. Lidl, a box of Carlsberg in Lidl, £13. You won't get cheaper than that. But Lidl is more expensive than Aldi, you see. You can do a better shop in Lidl. Don't get me wrong, but it'll cost you more money. So what you have to do is go around Aldi, get what you need and what you want, all right, and then finish off somewhere else and get your bits and bats like you know uh all uh coleman's mustard and you know blah 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 whatever whatever it's tricky what you need sainsbury's has gone cheaper similar to oh yeah well they've done so they've done some price matches haven't they i know that yeah but i've not been an experienced the price matches That's what I think you've got to do. Like the best shop that we used to do, we don't do it anymore. But we used to go to our parade, run around um, as uh, run around Asda, and they had, uh, I think it was a little so like you could like do a quick do that, but we don't do that anymore. Um, basically, I do it now. 
pretty much most of it. So I just go in Aldi because it's, it's cheap. It's like, you know what I mean? And as I say, the sausage, bacon, chicken, men's. Uh, beef joints, the fucking fab, fantastic, fantastic. The cheese, the mature, non-coloured cheese, big block, brilliant, about a fiver, no worries. The milk sound, I even get them. They like a lur, they, they like a lur pack. Throw two of them in. Fucking brilliant. Two pound fifty a pop. That's something like that. Might even be more now like everything goes up. So I, I I rate Aldi, but like I say, it's lacking. But for just going and getting your your main stay, cracking fucking shop. But it's cheap, cheaper. Because they get it cheap, they do it cheaper because like they get it's the way that they stack the shelves and the way they get the stuff like you know, so you they basically like, like I said, they're not all stacked beautifully on a shelf like that. Are they? Mark and Sparks ain't bad for beds. I bet it is. But we, I don't even know where there is a Mark and Sparks, but Aldi Veg. Dodgy. Dodgy. The potatoes are all right. Sound. Uh, the carrots, like I say, you've got to move on with them. They go off like you put them in the rack and they'll be gone in a couple of days. I can start stinking. So that's the problem with the veg. Uh, again, peppers are fine. Pretty much all all right. Just watch out for the carrots. Um, the potatoes again, the potatoes, potatoes, potatoes last for ages, don't they, in general. So you just got to be careful in Aldi with the carrots. Um, it's like the cream, Aldi cream crackers. They're not doodads, but they're brilliant. They're fine. So you have to learn to shop, don't you, like a cunt, basically, in 2023. Yeah, well, you might have had a bad experience. Like, our potatoes that we get generally from Aldi are all right. So, again, the veg, you've got to get on with it. I googled this. Why is Aldi veg doodad in it? And it went, it's because they keep it stored next to each other. Right? And they keep it near where the door opens and shuts. I thought, no, it's just that it hangs around before it gets on the shelves. That's what I thought. Aldi and Lidl remind me of a local supermarket. Something. Yeah, well, Lidl, it, it does remind you of an Aldi. I, I think they're related, but I can find no facts on that matter. Look how interesting this is. This is far better than talking about the Illuminati and child abuse, isn't it? Talking about survival modes, man. Like I say, you've got to like, you can't afford now to just go and do a big massive shop in one spot. You've got to go and look, you have to, if you've got the time and you can afford the time, which means going to two supermarkets when you go on your shop and if you come back and you save yourself, set 40 quid or you get an extra 40 quid's worth of produce because you do a big shop you're fucking on the winner right everyone goes to aldi At my mate they're like he's loaded and he goes oh, i've got aldi i've got aldi like but he gets his chicken from his he gets his chicken from a local butchers aldi is german it definitely sounds like doesn't it It definitely sounds it. All our supermarkets are foreign owned. So are our tram stops, train station. <laughs> We've sold everything off. The next thing that we're selling off is the NH fucking S. It's not our NHS. They run it into the ground till no one says it's worth it. Zero, I don't know who you think you are. Climbing all over it. So, is that you want me to smack you? Huh? What are you doing? Oh, you want to go in there, do you? Okay. 
Anyway, you know that's so I can go and fucking get comfy in fucking front rooms. You're right, cheeky bastard, isn't it? Bastard cat. He's been a, he's proving he's brilliant now. He's coming to himself now. Fantastic. Not annoying. He, he annoys me like if I'm sat in front room, like I've come and annoy me like, but he doesn't annoy her like I think he's scared of her really, but uh, he's fine now. Really, he's really like. You know, it's like he's he's made it where like you wouldn't you wouldn't not want him if you know what I mean. Which, but it's all you want from a cat, isn't it? We are going in the beginning, like, but we're all cunts. Is this some woman in Saddam there, like, is it Saddam? Where they're getting kicked out of, like, there are all these racist comments on the video, like, and one guy went, well, oh, she sounds like a right idiot, 20-year-old. I said, well, generally, we do sound like idiots at 20-year-old, don't we? I mean, I... I I was quite intelligent at 20, but I still would have annoyed. If I'd listened to myself now, I would have been a fucking idiot. Like, you know, 20 is still young, isn't it? You know what I mean? You know, we're not all fucking Albert Einsteins, are we? Though you like to think you are at 20, don't you? Tucker Carlson removed. You know, I remember when the riots were going on in America years ago, like before COVID, and I actually I, I did a copy and I put it up, and someone went, "Look at Crossman putting Tucker Carlson on." You know, as his wife, it it was a bad thing. I thought, I don't know, does it matter? Oh, four dogs and three rabbits. Fucking hell. I thought it doesn't matter. Because what he was saying, it was when all blacks were going fucking radio rental in America at the beginning, before COVID, like, you know. And uh, I thought, oh, no. I, I, you, have, you have to take someone on from what they, for what they're saying, don't you? It's like what I tried to explain just before Sucker like Carlson got fucked off was Tucker Carlson was they'd had some of re, some of his text messages to other uh, media roles of Fox News and he'd said he didn't like Donald Trump right it's only a few videos back if you don't believe me and uh, I said that they're pushing the narrative and, and, and he's on that he's in that oh, that's the push behind Tucker Carlson you see so I, I don't, I'm not sure which way it went but I've got a feeling because like I believe that um, Donald Trump is Rupert Murdoch's rent boy. You know what I mean when I say that? So because Tucker Carlson had gone against Donald Trump, he's made the perfect... Um, patsy. Perfect patsy. Because I think Tucker Carlson is pretty much a decent kind of guy, really, pretty much on what he's what he's put out. He's fought the uh, the communist element of American leadership that's been going on for years, hasn't he? You know. But, like, this is what I was trying to say in that last video. Your problem is, like, you've got Rupert Murdoch, right? Donald Trump, 
right? Fox News. Yeah, and then you've got Joe Biden, right? And the left. You see, and what they've done is they've clashed and Tucker Carlson's been the casualty of it. That's that. I still think Donald Trump might get back in power. Will it make any difference? Well, not really, no. That's what I mean. Well, we'll have to see. Will it be good for America? Well, again, I mean, like, the only good thing I've heard that Biden's done is uh, stop the uh, pharmaceutical companies getting greedy on insulin so far. I mean, I don't know how far that extends. I don't keep enough of an eye on American situation, like you know. Like I do believe that's been achieved, which is a good thing. And again, you know, as your Reform Party and Jeff do that, and uh, Nigel Farage. Uh, destroy the NHS along with the Conservatives and Labour when they get in. As long you, you understand what I mean, like um, that's what will happen in your life. So in the future, when say you've got ahead of the game in the future, you'll start having to find money because your mum's getting older and not so good. And then you'll you'll start getting not so good. And then maybe one of your kids will start getting not so good. So all the facts are that you got on a bit in life in the United Kingdom will all be dragged to shit because they will have privatised the NHS around your IC. That's what I'm telling you. Uh, I, that's a fact. And that's what they want to do. Can it be stopped? Oh, no, because they're destroying the NHS to the maximum. And when they've managed to destroy it enough, people will agree with it, you see. It's happening. No doubt about it. The only way you'd actually stop it, well, you can't. You just can't stop it. It's it's uh, an ultimate force that's going to happen. And it will affect us. I don't know. We'll have to see how quick they can kick the fuck out of it, won't we? Won't be one. Because I'll say, well, we can't afford it. Cheers, Spazzy. I, I know I'm right on that one. Because they've, they've had their eyes on it for fucking years and years and years. And the ones that have been like the Tories, they've been after fucking privatising it. Since Milton Friedman, you know what I mean? Friedman Economics. Another name that that Larkin Rolls meant, uh, mentioned in his video, Friedman, Friedman Economics. Friedman came to America as a socialist, turned into um, a conservative stroke capitalist, and then ended up making his own religion of economics which is called freedmanism which margaret thatcher which probably why you lost someone in in your ancestry and ronald reagan which is why someone in america would have lost someone in their ancestry followed milton freedmanism but the problem with milton freedmanism was like and rose was that when it came to helping the poor Milton Friedman's answer for it was charity well charity in a, in, a, in, a, in a situation like the National Health Service is called socialism and in your America like in Rose, you've got people that have to find that much money 
for drugs that people in England can get quite freely and quite cheaply. So how does socialism not work, like and rolls? I need to have a word with like and rolls, don't I? I'd love to do it. He's like get a rip into shreds. He's like on his internet going, <laughs> fuck off. What do you think fucking stop feudalism? Socialism. Where do you think socialism comes from? It's fucking biblical, you big baby. Stick a dummy in his mouth. Do you get what I mean? These are pricks. Right? The people at the top are hereditary. Ah, fuck off. And that's where socialism does have a chance of, of being, like, legitimately debated. Do you get what I mean? It just does. Don't worry, I won't, I mean, I'm hanging on him. And I'm not a socialist. But for these pricks to say that there's, you know, like, uh, oh, let's do it. Jordan Peterson. Joe Rogan. Now, Russell Brand. Fuck off. Fucking bollocks. The socialism that you would like to try and bring in is what, what you've got now, which is the National Health Service. But you do that across the board, you see. Okay, now. Of all, of everything. It's what you've got now when you think about having um, a benefit system. You know, these people might not appreciate the benefit system, but at some point they might need it. And when they need it and acquire it, they might appreciate it and then they might have more understanding. A lot of people learnt that through COVID, didn't they? So, there is a benefit system in America. See, this is, again, Milton's, Freeman the Economics said, like, he said, people are actually unemployed. He said, because the majority of them are choosing to be unemployed because there's such a gracious benefit system supplied to them. Right? And this is to do with weights and measures of inflation, by the way. Um, which is more complicated than I can... That, that can be asked explaining right now. Well, I could actually explain it if I wanted, but... Probably not now. Might do that another day. <laughs> but um, basically, not everyone that isn't working actually wants not to work. But what you've got a problem because what you want to work is wage. That improves your life. You see, that's why you get comments under any benefit handouts. Like you get comments saying, "Okay, now, like, oh, you'll get people saying, 'I'm on my ass and I'm grafting like a cunt.' Is it a lie? No, it's true. It's true. You know, some people, right, are." Uh, but what what but, but people that work right can have a miserable existence and people that don't work can have a miserable existence also but the miser miserable ex existence of the people that don't work is that they get the rent paid they get all the dodges and all the fees yeah Right, and like, all right, they basically skin, but they can survive 
Now the other the, the other poor cunt is grafting his ass off that ass that doesn't get refuge or protection from all them said things, right? He grafts his ass off, but he's still on his ass. The only difference between the guy that's doing now and getting everything paid for, and the guy that's grafting his ass off, the only difference is that the guy that's grafting his ass off. He's doing 60 hours a week. And this is what Milton Friedman was trying to point out, you see. That there is no real unemployment. Because there's people that are basically choosing not to work. Which means inflation is not actually affected on the lines of because what it means is like if so like when <laughs> it's absolutely mental, isn't it? I, I, I apologize. No one's watching now, thank God. What happens is when work becomes scarcer, right? The wages, right? Basically, when right, I can't explain how to do it. Right, I'm gonna do it again quickly. Right, when people, right, are unemployed, that brings the price of wages down because people said, "Well, I'll do that job." For less money. Yeah. True. Am I right? Is it true? So then the person that's employed has two options. They either leave the job or take the drop in wages. Don't they? It's mental ill, isn't it? Is that true? Yeah. But that was Freeman Economics. 1970s to 1990s. Right. What about Crossman economics from 2000 to 2023? What's the difference? What's happened? What's what's going on now, brothers and sisters? It's called the minimum wage. I was doing videos year, five years ago saying. The minimum wage is communism. Larkin Rose. Communism. Come on, Larkin Rose. Let's fucking have it right. Eh? Fucking prick. And I don't hear him talking about that either. That's what I'm trying to say. That's what I'm trying to say. What about it, Larkin Rose? You're quoting Milton Friedman on your channel, getting 33,000 views, earning a little bit of money or a good few quid, I don't know, writing your fucking books and stuff. Right? Quoting people like Milton Friedman. But can we have we weighed and analysed the difference in what was happening in Milton Friedman's time to this time? Because you got something called the minimum wage. What's the minimum wage? It's the fact that you can apply for a hundred jobs across the board, right? And each one will be paying exactly the same money. What's that? Larkin was. Tell me what it is. Why aren't you pointing that out in your videos? You don't work that out? Okay. Okay. No, what, what you are is a cunt that's doing all right and you're fighting socialism, but you're not fucking pointing out the fact that you're already in fucking socialism. 
via the minimum wage lacking rolls. Because you're doing all right. Just like Russell Brand's doing all right. Just like Jordan Peterson's doing all right. And they're all our fucking saviours. Right? And they don't really need to think about how socialism needs to be pointed out. Yeah? Because they're all fucking multi-millionaires. The same as Russell Brand. So they will there, stand and fight socialism. When socialism is the NHS, socialism is the cooperative movement. And I'm not a socialist. But these people, they're either getting paid or they're thick. Yeah? Whichever one it is, I don't care. Probably go for being thick, really. So it, you're not in the position to need to need the NHS because you, you've done all right in life and you don't need to worry about it, do you? But the NHS is there for you and your family, your children in the United Kingdom right now. And these cunts have given up with it. And that's Reform Party, Jordan Peterson, Russell Brand, um, Jeff Taylor, um, the Tory party and it's looking like the Labour party as well you're on the spiral down so sorry sorry don't want to be the bearer of fucking calling people dick mate fucking dickheads You're witnessing a form of socialism right now. When people get sacked, right, in America and in England, right, and they get a limited, albeit limited, amount of money to live on. That's socialism. If people, right, if I want anything, it's that like I want everyone else to have an equal chance in life. That means that I'm a communist. Alan, did you like that? Alan, did you like it? <laughs> I know you're watching, I can feel you. That makes me a communist, does it? We'll all have to go full commie in a minute on the Craftsman channel, what? Yeah, well, so we fucking should. We fucking should. You know. I've heard that much crap on it now, like, I mean, not, I mean, what I'm on about is, I've heard that, that much crap on what socialism is. Socialism is the NHS. Socialism is the benefit system. Socialism is everybody throwing a few quid in for the ones that haven't. Socialism is the education system. Not anymore, but it used to be. Without, there's an out wrong with a bit of that. And these cunts will tell you that it's crap and not the NHS on its head. Right? And what makes me laugh is the people that watch Jeff Taylor 
that are all mind controlled into being the next fucking Nazi fucking party, right? Probably most of them are on the fucking arse and I'm fucking fought two fucking minutes forward. Left that under on a comment in his channel, like, you know. No, I didn't get a reply. Now what what does what does happen when you get a real serious uh well in it, like I said I've left a comment under I can't remember what it was but like I said it, it was to uh socialist I said if socialism well I said socialism would have worked wouldn't it already somewhere in the world but i'm i'm also arguing i'm counter arguing that point right now aren't I? what we're down to two now i'm counter arguing that point right now aren't I? and rightly so yeah because In the future, as mankind progresses, as he will, if we don't blow ourselves up or whatever else happens, uh, you're going to have to have a form of socialism. You know, it's it's not a joke. You know, it wasn't a joke when the steam engine put loads of people out of work. Which it did. And it won't be a joke when uh, automisation puts lorry drivers, taxi drivers, bus drivers, train drivers out of work. Yeah, there'll be a little bit of a, a changeover and there'll be a little bit of a blah, a blah, blah, blah. But in the end, you're going to end up with a mass of people unemployed and you're not going to be able to give them all jobs stationary jobs it's not going to be able to do it it's the fact worldwide so you're going to need for your comfy lives that you all want in the future you can have them but you're going to have you get what i mean like and and the only way to do that and this is always and only through automization you're going to have to have a form of socialism you're going to have to pay people to do fuck all. And you're going to have to say to people, do you want to work or do you want to do fuck all? And the ones that want to, some will say, I want to work. And you'll say, right, you can have a job. And the ones that say, I'd rather just sit around and let everyone else pay for me. You're going to say, right, there you go. You can sit there and have a, de a decent-ish wage. Right. That's what's going to happen. Now, what's going to happen when that happens is how many people are going to say, fuck that. Right, there was an experiment. Oh, God, it was... Um, it was in my brain then. There's an experiment. Uh, oh, it'll come to me as I explain it. They got the factory. And they said, right, everyone's on the same way. That was from the sweeper upper to the, uh, it was Henry Ford. He did it as an experiment in one of his factories. Uh, so the 
the sweeper upper was paid the same as the draftsman. And as they did the experiment, the draftsman threw his pencil on the floor in anger and went, give me the brush. So that's a defence for uh, capitalism. Like It's the drive that you need. But like the problem that you've got with the way that the world's going at the minute is, and it's basic. There's a little shop up the road from here. And the last time I went in it, Guess what was in there? A little serve yourself unit. And it has two people behind the counter. Can you imagine what this what they look at that like? A little serve yourself unit. What must they think when they're serving people and that catches their eye? It's about as big. It's about, I bet it's four of these kitchens that I'm in now. And they've, it's called a one stop. And they've put a little machine checkout in there. The girl that works at Asda, she, I said, well, you're basically better off to try and pay with cash whenever you can. I said, uh, never use them uh, self-checkout machines. And she said, oh, yeah. She said, the loads of people have been laid off uh, that worked at Asda since the self-service checkouts came in. Yeah. They will have what? So that's what automation is. So anyone that doesn't want to understand um, the, like, basically there were, there were people, like, they used to work in the fields and they used to, like, ride an horse and they used to pull the plough from one end of the field back to the other. And they were, like, the honchos of the farming thing. Yeah. And in a blink of an eye, they had two steam engines on either side of the field. And the steam engine pulled the plough to one end, then they re it, and it pulled it to the next, and that steam engine went up, and that steam engine went up, and they ploughed the field with steam. Steam and coal. Now, fortunately, in them days, there was things that them uh, farmers, uh, well, they they could find something else to do, couldn't they? No, they couldn't. In the end, in the villages, in the hill, in, in 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 the villages of England, there was masses of unemployment. Hmm. Yeah, there was. Don't ask me, I know all these things. Just all knowing. <laughs> Down. There we go. That's where we like it. But these are facts. And that's how it goes. It goes. And when you've got mass unemployment because all the jobs have been took over by machines just like the steam engine you're going to need socialism aren't you? thanks for hanging in there mate Oh, is it that? Is it really? Right, that's it. That's a good do, that. I enjoyed that video. It won't go anywhere, but it doesn't really matter, does it? But hopefully, 
if anyone gets to this point, you'll see what I'm saying. Because through automization, you are going to need socialism. Can't wait. I mean, when they say, like, what do I want to do? Do I want to work or do that? I just do you help me. <laughs> Big love, brothers and sisters. See? You get this far, thumb it up. Who's in the yard there? Who's left? Oh, did I blank everybody? Sorry. Yeah, there'll be more deaths. Right, that's it. Peace, people. Paul the man. I'm not the only man out here. Come and have a live about Brian and Harvey seeing us. Right, big love, big love, Lenny. And she wants to stop the streaming. Okay, okay, one.